So for quite a while I've been using this cheap kit made Days ATU antenna tuner and it's been quite satisfactory. The only thing is it's a bit of a pain having to adjust it every time you want to change bands particularly when you're doing automated modes like Whisper and FT8. It'd be really nice to set up the scheduler and leave it running all night and have it automatically tune in. So it'd be really nice to have something that was fit and forget and would automatically tune in the antenna for different bands rather than having to faff around. The centre one's the inductor and the other two are the capacitors. This one hardly does anything. But it's been a nice little tuner and the kit cost me about 12 quid. So I'm not complaining, the switch is a bit dodgy on it, which I don't like. So for a while, I've also had an automatic antenna tuner. So why haven't I been using it? So I had some problems with the original one, that it wouldn't trigger off the 5 watt radio. And the radio I had before this one only made about 3 or 4 watts on some bands. So it basically wouldn't automatically tune. Now there is a modification for it. To convert it from an ATU100 into an ATU10. So I carried out that modification by modifying the transformer on the input that measures the SWR and reducing it from 10 turns on each winding to 5 turns on each winding. But ever since I modified it, it's just represented a dead shot to the antenna. Not good. So after umming and ahhing and trying to diagnose the faults and not getting anywhere and realising that a completed one of these is worth over about £100 uh, on most of the auction sites I took the plunge and ordered another circuit board. Now the circuit board is what I call a lazy man's kit or lazy woman's kit. You basically have to wind all the coils, fit about 15 components and then fit all the relays. It's quite a job, and the first time I was a little intimidated by it. So I've took some still photographs that I can show you in really good detail as to what I've done. So when I did the first one, in a 100 watt configuration, it worked, but it wasn't sensitive enough. In 5 watt configuration, it didn't work. So I ordered another circuit board. Nicely enough, the new circuit board also came with the display, but I've already got a case and a display. And mine is set up for PL259SO239 socket rather than the little SMA ones that come with the circuit board. The sweet thing about this is if you press transmit and the SWR exceeds what more the 1.3 to 1, it'll tune. So if you heard the buzz from the relays, it goes through a sequence and it does a binary search. So it drops in binary values of both inductors and capacitance and according to what the SWR bridge returns it makes a decision whether to add or remove that load whether it's capacitive road, road, load or inductive load so indeed it does that and it does it really quickly if I press it a second time it won't do it now just draw your attention to the power meter I am not putting out 19 watts because I've modified the transformer we have to make some software changes now the PIC programmer, PIC kit programmer, to do this costs almost as much as I paid for the circuit board, which is annoying. But I've ordered one. I'm going to do the mods. It only involves changing a couple of hex bits in the EEPROM, but it's not easy to program it. So if we go up to 7 megs, to 40 metres, and I'll just tune off there. Uh, we, need, we have to be in CW mode, it won't tune on anything else. So pay attention, we're on 1.45 microfarads and 1000 PF. And now we're on 2.2147. And again, the power meter is barking, but the SWR is less than 1.18. The efficiency is 99%. That's going to be the same however you scale it. So let's go up another band, bearing in mind I've only got four bands on this. Just nudge out the way there. Probably safe there really for CW. And once again, we have a different set of values. Wonderful, this will go from 1.8 to 50 megahertz. Now it's, an open, it's a true open source project this by N7DDC. 
You literally can't buy a genuine one. There is no such thing. He open sourced the plans. He open sourced the Kerber files for the printed circuit board, the circuit diagram, the whole shebang. I put them all on my GitHub, but I claim no originality for them. They're just copies that I'm keeping on my GitHub for safekeeping and to share with other people. There are bits and bobs of stuff all over the place. So the next one up is 21 megahertz. Last one. And he's happy. Or rather, it's completely unhappy. Oh, hang on. It needs to be a CW. So within one second, it shuffles all its unteen relays, which is absolutely brilliant. I could bore you with how it works, but and it's very easy for doing some mathematical calculations for an SWR bridge to work out the lead angle and the lag angle. One represents the capacitive reactance and the other represents the inductive reactance. A little microprocessor, even a little PIC16 chip, which is what most of these use, or PIC64, PIC1664, it's got a weird model number I'm not familiar with. These things can do the calculation very, very quickly and work out what combination of relays it needs to try. A few moments later. So, as is often the case, things don't go according to plan. So I got everything set up to reprogram the ATU 100 to make it into an ATU 10. I got my PIC program set up and I managed to read, read the software, to read it from the memory. Looking at other people's videos of it, the checksum was different, which is not the most important thing. But this first row of data was completely different, as were everything else, to be honest. Their figures for these did not align with what I've got. So I did a bit of digging and I managed to find a guy who I will credit in the description, who had the same software as me. And he seemed to have some problems because he managed to not describe everything he was doing completely. But he did describe that this one bit was for auto-tune and mine is already set to 05, which is auto-tune. So if it's set to 01 or 00, anything else really, it's not going to auto-tune. Now mine is always auto-tuned. The other thing was that the power on mine and his was set to 0. I'm not suggesting it is 0. I think it's 100 and changing it to 40, change, changes it to 40. So not, not quite sure exactly what the bit byte represents. And this one does seem to represent the number of turns on the transformer because it was 10 before and five after. So having read it in, I'm now going to export it and I'm going to save it as before. Yes, I've already done it. But that is my sort firmware before I've re read, before I've modified it. So the plan is, that is 05 already. This should be 40. It's the one above the first FF in the bottom, if you have difficulty uh, isolating it. And this is the second byte. I'm changing that to 05. So it's 05, 40, 05. 05405 and we can write that directly to our pick chip. It does a verification anyway, so I've seen people verify it. If you want to, you can verify it manually. There's no harm in that whatsoever. If it prevents you uh, a problem, then that will be fine. So that's it. And uh, all I need to do now is to unplug it and plug in the radio. You do not need to power up the radio to do this modification. Uh, if you if you ain't got, if it doesn't work, you haven't got power supplied to the board and the power comes from the PIC programmer. You do not need external power and you certainly don't need it turned on. If in doubt, turn it off at the power switch. It will still work. It'll still, if, it, if it won't read the chip, you've got a problem. You do need to be careful with the pin orientation. 
because there are more pins on the lead than you actually use. So rather than cut one of them off, I've just overlapped it against the push button pins. So right, I'm just going to confirm that this works and uh, you'll see the video of that. A few moments later. Okay, so we've installed the software, put the display back onto the circuit board. So let's go down to 80 meters. Not my most successful band, but there we go, 80 meters we're on. And I'll key up on the Morse key. So as well as tuning, we're now getting an indication of 5.2 watts, which is correct, or a lot closer than it was. We got to seven, oops, better not go off the bottom of the band, somebody will uh, not like me for it. So I jumped up to seven watts. Down a bit on there. Four point nine watts. The SWR is one point nine, which is a bit high, but that's a different issue altogether. And on twenty one. I don't think it is fourteen watts. That's not happy. That's not tuning, uh, so obviously some antenna mods required. But that is it in operation. It's not giving completely silly power readings now. So I hope you attempt this mod if you've got QRP radio or you're thinking of buying one. It does make it more versatile. And because it'll take 40 watts, if you've got a linear amplifier or a more powerful radio, maybe 20, 30, 40 watts, it should still be usable without any problems. And these things are so cheap you could probably afford to buy one as a uh, QRP one. Or one is a 100 watt one. I believe the maximum rating is actually about 150 watts but I wouldn't want to chance that. And I don't think these relays are adequate for that to be honest. But that's just my opinion. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, best 73s.